All right, y'all, back here with the next part of my CD collection. We got some more thrash to talk about today. I'm pretty hyped on it. A lot of good stuff in here, and we're going to cut an end to it. I just got off work, no beer. I still got stuff to do today. So we're listening to November's Doom with Into Night's Requiem Eternal. Chicago-based death metal band, kind of melodic death, doom, somewhere in that general vicinity. Really, really good stuff. This is just kind of a random one in the middle of their uh, catalog. You know, November's doom. All right, so we're going to start with the E's and in the K today. So we're going to start off with nothing particularly special, but Kill Grid by Enforced. I picked this up. I don't even remember where I picked this up from, to be honest with you, but I figured I'd give it a shot because these guys had a lot of traction for them uh, recently. I don't really know why it is that people love this so much but it's pretty good kind of crossover thrash maybe a little bit of death metal here and there maybe that's why it's got a little bit of the new wave of death metal mixed in with some crossover thrash uh but yeah it's pretty good um nothing particularly special for me though now this this is where we're talking from beyond by enforcer this is more on the speed metal side of things this is amazing dude this is such a good swedish thrashy speed metal um super super tasteful done in very 1980s style just top top tier stuff dude gotta love it uh, in a similar vein maybe a little bit more speed metal is evil invaders with pulses of pleasure this is something that i got into pretty early on into my metal journey um i really wound up digging this i heard the song fast loud and rude and then i heard them play uh, fabulous disaster and then i think they did an exciter cover as well um it might have been the song evil invaders i don't really remember but really really good stuff i really like this band they have kind of the ah! kind of vocals to them but <laughs> it's not a really stupid but whatever this is really really good and this is the newest album from evil invaders this came out last year and it's pretty good. It's uh, slowed down quite a bit. It's a little bit more on the traditional metal side of things as opposed to being so speedy and thrashy the whole time. But it's really, really well done because these guys, these guys are students of the craft. You know, you can tell this is metal made by like real old school metal heads uh, who are just younger, I guess. But it's really, really cool stuff. Evil Invaders. Basically, one of the greatest speed metal records ever. Heavy Metal Maniacs by Exciter. I got... This on LP as well, which is sometimes the case with some of these classic stuff. The CD doesn't like to play in my car, which is kind of annoying. I wonder what the deal is with that. It's a Megaforce reissue from 2005. Um, yeah, so it's really, really great. Nothing really I could say. Catchy. Heavy Metal Maniacs is literally a, a metal anthem as far as I'm concerned. Now this one I got... I don't remember if my buddy Steve sent me this. I think he did, and I wound up liking it a lot. Uh, excuse with Profits from the Occultic Cosmos. Really, really gnarly stuff, dude. Really sweet, well put together, techy thrash. Kind of with a weird, darker atmosphere to it. This is out on Shadow Kingdom, and it fits really well on that label, I think. This is a little bit more on the extreme side, obviously, for the, uh, the label itself. Just top tier stuff, man. Check out uh, Excuse if you have not. If you're a fan of Corner, maybe a little bit of that weird Greek melodicism in there. Uh, I got a handful from Exodus. I have the censored cover version of Bonded by Blood. I picked this up when I was younger just because I didn't have a copy of it. I've heard this album so many times. It's just kind of hard to justify buying another one. Really, really top shelf stuff. I mean, there's nothing I can say that's bad about this at all i mean a lesson in violence strike of the beast is like one of the best thrash songs out of the bay area scene uh bonded by blood the song exodus and then there were none i could literally just name the entire thing it's top shelf a plus 100 perfect thrash record and it's not even my favorite exodus i don't have uh pleasures of the flesh but this is the best exodus album as far as i'm concerned um I absolutely love this album. This is a number one soundtrack to my high school years. One of them, at least. If I was gonna, I thought about making like a video. I just kind of got the idea to make one of like what I would listen to transporting myself back to being 16, you know? And I thought that'd be kind of a fun idea. Um, but yeah, so this is a top shelf album. It's fun and it's goofy. Yes, I don't mind the low rider cover. Don't come at me because I like 
when music is fun. I know it's, it's an odd concept to some of these people on YouTube. I enjoy when things are enjoyable. I don't know what to tell you. This is an okay album. This is Impact is Imminent. Basically the follow-up to Fabulous Disaster. Uh, this is a Japanese repress, which again, I, I've mentioned it in other videos. I don't actively seek out Japanese pressings of anything. And I only got it because of the convenience factor of it being literally right in front of my face. So I'm hyped to have it. Um, it's not going to get a ton of plays though. I mean, there's nothing like looking at this. I'm not even like seeing things that are really going to pop out in my brain. It falls a little flat. Next. This is actually a really good record. This is Blood In, Blood Out. Uh, one of the newer ones from 2014. I don't remember how many they've done since then, but this is really, really good. I mean, it's got features from like Kirk Hammett and stuff on it and some other people. I don't remember who else is on here, but the song Blood In, Blood Out is really, really catchy. It's really well done. I like the song Salt The Wound, which I think has Kirk Hammett on it. Body Harvest is really cool. Wrapped in the Arms of Rage. Uh, Food For The Worms, cool, cool stuff. Another one of those you know, impressive feats of an old band making a top tier record in their older age, which I respect endlessly. Two of my favorite thrash records, Possessed by Fire by Exumer, absolutely amazing German thrash, one of the greatest Teutonic albums ever. This isn't even my favorite Exumer album, but this is a really, really great one. I mean, Sorrow of the Judgment, Destructive Solution, Journey to Oblivion, Reign of Sadness, really great stuff. And my favorite of the Exhumer stuff, Rising from the Sea. I don't know, man. I just have tend, to, I tend to like this one more. It's probably because it's the first Exhumer album I ever heard, and I just can't see any reason that that one's gonna beat it out because I think this is just a more well done put together album. Uh, this is a Pachico Records repress distributed by Icarus Music. Really good. This might be, I thought this was a bootleg, but it, I don't, it's listed as official on Discogs. It's just an Argentinian press that I got off eBay. So both of these are, and I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, if you guys have any information on that kind of stuff, I don't personally care all that much, but I would be curious at the same time. So Exumer. I showed this in a recent update, War of Words by Fight. This is basically Rob Halford trying to make like groovy thrash heavy metal stuff. It's not bad. It's not amazing by any means. If I didn't own it anymore, I wouldn't be mad about it because it's not going to get played very often. But for, you know, $2 out of a box at a flea market, whatever, why not, right? Um, fight. I don't have much to say about it. Next, Flotsam and Jetsam with Doomsday for the Deceiver must have thrash speed metal obviously probably most well known for having jason newstead playing the bass on this album before he joined uh, metallica and this is just so so good there's a song called fade to black on here which is kind of funny um desecrator hammerhead is like an anthem as far as metal is uh, yeah just so so good man forbidden twisted into form you gotta have this, dude. You wanna talk about a tech thrash masterpiece? One of the greatest Bay Area records ever? Get out of here if you don't even know this one, man. Get out of here and go listen to it. That's what I mean by that. Uh, Cause this is something you gotta have. Something you gotta have in your brain. It's gotta be in a constant memory rotation in your dome. Really, really top shelf stuff, man. Check this out. Next, kind of goofy new thrash, Tales from the Grave in Space by Gamma Bomb. I picked this up off my buddy Hugh Morgan. Uh, for those of you who have been around for a while here on YouTube, Hugh used to do a channel that was really, really good. Uh, and I picked this up off of him from his Discogs page. And it's fun, it's goofy, it's by no means essential, but it, you know, nonetheless, it's fun, newer thrash. All right, so here's some really good new thrash. One of my favorites of the new era is Time Is Up by Havoc. Really, really good stuff. This one really feels very testimony, and that's usually a really good way to make me like your band is if you have anything to do with testament. Uh, Prepare for Attack is a great opener. Then stuff like No Amnesty and Fatal Intervention, DOA, Covering, Fire, Scumbag in, Disi in Disguise, Out of My Way, Time Is Up. I literally could name pretty much every one of those songs, minus like two that I could like sing in my head. Just really, really top shelf album and gotta have it as far as I am concerned. 
This is probably my favorite of the Havoc discography, which is Unnat Unnatural Selection. I've had this for a while now. I traded it away for a while because I didn't care about Thrash for a good number of years when I got into college. And uh, this is actually the copy I bought back then, and I got it back. So I'm really hyped to have this one. I mean, opening with I Am The State, and then you're going to Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death, Under The Gun, Living Nightmare, Chasing The Edge, Children of the Grave, Black Sabbath cover, Unnatural Selection, just super, super good, angry, politically charged thrash metal, which tends to be pretty normal in the genre. This is an album that I think would be really, really good if they made a couple of tweaks to it, but conform aside, I'm not even gonna bother opening because I don't think that there's that much um, exciting stuff in here. But one of my favorite songs I ever did is Hang em High, and that's on here. Really, really good. Circling the Drain is really, really good. Pieces, My Pieces, Piece in My Pieces, uh, Master Plan, String Break, Slaughtered are the two bonus tracks. They're really, really good. I really like Circling the Drain as well. Uh, the, the one thing that kind of irks me about this is David's backing vocals are kind of that filter that Rest from Leviathan uses where he's yelling through like a walkie-talkie filter. I hate that. I absolutely cannot stand that 99% of the time and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way in there. But otherwise, it's a really great record. All right, Tales of Terror by Hollow's Eve. This is a mainstay for my Halloween playlist. Come that time of year, which is creeping up on us here pretty soon. I absolutely love this. There's just such an old school feel in this album. It's so 1980s. It's got the same corny camp that you would get out of like an 80s horror movie. And it's all the same kind of stuff that I always love to hear. Um, yeah, just really, really top shelf speed metal. Kind of gruff and rough American Southern good stuff. Next, I picked this recently up off of the, uh, the website for this band. But this is... Original Miscrency and Terra Symmetry by Hellwitch. I don't really know exactly uh, how to pronounce any of that, but this is a really cool kind of two disc set that has some really top tier super feral thrash to it. I just really, really enjoy this one, and I was excited enough to get Patrick Rannery to sign this for me. And I think he was filling all the orders, and he sent me some wild stuff too. He sent me like a, a post office sticker of like cremated remains included or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of ridiculous, but I would expect nothing less. So this is the new reissue. It'd be great if I could get the other two guys to sign it. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Next, a tribute to Insanity by Hexen House. This is some Swedish thrash that is an absolute must have. It's very, very very well put together and no that's not the blessed or the sick album cover well it is the actual blessed or the sick album cover but this came out before that uh this came out in 1988 kind of tech thrash really kind of aggressive good stuff another one from them the edge of eternity another must have one this one i don't seem to uh grasp as much as the other one this one seems like a little bit more heady a little more spacey sounding uh maybe it's just select or it's just suggestive by the aesthetics but either way it's really good really good Swedish thrash. Next, some top tier stuff. Rot Dead, or Not Yet, Not Dead Yet, Raging Violence and Hate, Fear, and Power by Hyrax. This is a big old compilation of like three releases from Hyrax. Um, and I absolutely love this band. They're so fun and the kind of weird vocals that, what's his name, Cater? I don't remember. I don't remember Keaton. I don't remember the fellow's name, but he's a killer vocalist and it's so odd to listen to because he has such a one of a kind voice. It's just super, super fun. Hyrax is great. Another great one, Rather Death Than False of Faith by Hydrovane. Top tier UK thrash. Probably my favorite thrash album from the UK that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, I've probably heard this more than any other English thrash really really good stuff uh it's kind of again a little bit more on the feral side a really aggressive almost touching on some death metal here and there really good i believe this band is from denmark i think excuse uh, extra ex excursion demise by invocator really really good i didn't know what this was when i first saw it in the store and then i wound up going home and looking it up and one of my buddies went back to that store like a week or two later and I was like, hey, uh, grab this for me and I'll give you some cash. 
when I see a next or I'll Venmo you or whatever and I got it and it was over the moon. Uh, useless hammer hark slipcase as usual and it takes everything in my power to not just throw it in the garbage but this is just top tier top tier tech thrash from northern europe this also comes with some demos being genetic confusion demo alteration demo and the re-recording of insurrected despair and then a promo 1991 so you get a ton of music two full discs of goodies on here just go pick this ratio up if you haven't heard this indicator album i promise you won't be disappointed uh, all right next none shall defy by infernal majesty a lot of people worship this album. I kind of haven't been hit very hard by it, but that's just me. Uh, High Roller Records, Repress, great band photos. Yeah, this one just really hasn't gotten me quite like some of the other stuff, which is funny because it's very similar to Hell Witch. Uh, but it's, you know, Canadian, Canadian thrash that I think gets a proper amount of praise. I just haven't, I just haven't hit it, hit it yet, you know? Sometimes it just happens. But yeah, Infernal Majesty. All right, Terrible Certainty. I have a bunch of creator to show and then we're done. Uh, the remastered version of Terrible Certainty. Recently picked this up, I don't particularly remember, but just some really aggressive, angry thrash. Yeah, it's raw, it's crazy. You know how it goes with this stuff, man. It's just creator doing creator. I didn't realize how pink Floydy this November's Doom album was. Next, Creator's Endless Pain. I'm not going to keep opening these. I don't feel like it. Um, just some really nasty stuff. I think this one's a lot better than that one. Uh, but it still hasn't quite gotten there yet. But this really holds up the steel kind of proto, really aggressive black and death metal style that Creator's kind of known for. This is where it starts getting really good, obviously. Pleasure to Kill. Really, really good. This is actually a noise pressing. Picked this up from my buddy. Got the flag of hate EP on the tagged onto the end to it. Just really, really top shelf good stuff. My favorite creator record, Extreme Aggression. This is the first creator I ever got into. And it was because of the song Betrayer. I watched uh, some live stuff on YouTube and I was just over the moon. This one is just so, so exciting and fun to listen to. It also comes with the live in East Berlin 1990 set, which I already have because I have the special edition DVD. Um, but it's cool to have anyway. Maybe I don't feel like taking the DVD out, you know. Coma of Souls. Kind of the last really top tier creator album as far as I'm concerned. Even then, some people have some complaints about this, which is whatever. Think whatever you want to, I don't care. But uh, I think it's a pretty good record. It is a little flat compared to Extreme Aggression and the other one, but you know, really good. And Violent Revolution is the last creator that I own. Um, I kind of like when they get all melodic, and, uh, but the the beaker vocals are kind of something to get used to, which I do enjoy. I just don't listen to that much of this stuff anymore. Uh, the newer creator, I mean. I like the old creator still a lot. But I will call it at that, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed this edition. We probably got two, maybe three left in the thrash section, and then we're done. Uh, and then we're moving on to what's after thrash. Oh, death metal. So we'll be creeping up on death metal here pretty soon. I'll catch you all in the next one. Keep it greasy.